Hey guys, good morning and welcome to the weekend. Today I want to talk again about the U.S. Mint and tell you um, where I think I might have been wrong and why I'm starting to believe um, their story about silver planchet shortages. And of course, uh, we've learned recently that the U.S. Mint hedges its uh, production of 30, 40 million silver eagles. And what that would mean is they actually have a short contract somewhere out there. Um, and if the price goes up too much, they stand to lose a lot of money. If the price goes down, well, then I guess they would break even. So, uh, you know, we can add them to the list of, uh, of entities that is not really interested in an escalating silver price. Um, but that, that is not the story today. The story I want to get into is um, the suppliers of the planchets. Okay, now I've been doing a little bit of digging, and there are some other videos on this subject. But the United States Mint, uh, according to Keith Newmeyer, used to obtain uh, blanks from four different mints. Okay, um, and according to Keith, over the years, two of those four mints have gone bankrupt. All right, that's what happens when the price is below what it takes to run a business with ever escalating costs. Um, so what used to be a four mint supplier of silver planchets uh, is now a two mint supplier. Um, I heard the name of the other supplier the other day, but I didn't write it down. But there are two, according to reliable sources. One of them, and notably the biggest, is the Sunshine Mint. All right, here we are at the Sunshine Mint website. Uh, they refer to themselves as SMI. Sunshine Minting is a supplier of precious metal products in North America. We are primary supplier of silver blanks to the United States Mint and a supplier of mint products to international mints as well, financial institutions, marketing companies, and corporations around the world. But notice they said we are the primary supplier. Now there is apparently a secondary supplier but from what I've heard, there are only two. So you might ask yourself, what is the capacity of the primary supplier of these uh, blanks or planchets, as they call them? Well, let's take a look. All right, this is right off their website, um, and uh, uh, delivery times may vary. Uh, the following illustrates our typical capacity for the production of a one ounce blank. 999 silver is 1,000 to 200,000 per week. All right, are you starting to get a picture of it? If their capacity is 200,000 per week, let's call that 800,000 uh, per month. How in the world is the Sunshine Mint going to come up with the majority of 20, 30, 40, or 50 million uh, of these blanks? They are just not. And that's probably why there used to be four suppliers, but how would two suppliers come up with that kind of volume? The other thing to recognize, you might say, why uh, doesn't the U.S. Mint just make them themselves? Well, th there's a big difference between smelting and uh, refining and minting. Okay, a mint operation is a machine shop and a smelting operation where they pour the silver. I know a little bit about that. They pour, they melt and pour the silver into blanks is a whole different operation. And I'm just going to uh, have to guess here that the, sun sh that the uh, U.S. Mint does not have the capacity to smelt um, pour and create blanks. Uh, while they may provide the material, the silver metals, um, to the Sunshine Mint, um, and I don't know that they do, but they, they seem to allude they do, um, they don't have the ability to uh, turn Dory bars or thousand ounce bars into planchettes. And then another thing that is happening is um, the Great Resignation. Here I am are the careers at the Sunshine Mint, and I believe they only have two um, operations, metallurgist, security office, accountant, accountant, manufacturing associate, uh, coining machine operator, 
tooling machinist, melt room operator, extruder operator, blanking machine operator, maintenance tech 3, maintenance tech 2, maintenance tech 1, shipping receiving, gold room operator. Are you getting the picture? Okay, if you're, um, you know, if you're oper if you're working in any kind of business situation right now, uh, from manufacturing to, uh, you know, a anything um, in the service industry, uh, you know that um, it is difficult to find people that are willing to work for the old wages. Of course, thanks to the mismanagement of our government and the monetary system, uh, we've created. Uh, um, galloping inflation and salaries are not keeping up with the cost of living people are saying gee I gotta go find something else I've got to go back to school I've got to move to a different location where rent is not four thousand dollars a month um, which is what it's uh, approaching here where I live um, so it is difficult to find people it is difficult to find people in the manufacturing area um, at the same time, uh, the, the pandemic has caused a lot of older people to retire, uh, much to their chagrin, what they thought would uh, sustain them through their retirement uh, is only a fraction of what they need now with the new cost of living. Uh, take a look at uh, your electric bill and your water bill and um, all the food bills and your energy bill and your gas bill etc but uh, there's been a lot of retirement of people that know shit okay the older people and the younger people are positioning for uh, a job that they can live on uh, sunshine mint is not uh, exempt from that and i think what we have here is the perfect storm of um, the one of the two and the primary supplier of planchettes actually not being able to keep up with growing demand. Now, is that a shortage of silver? No, I don't think so. Um, although I do think there will ultimately be a shortage of silver. But this, I really think that the Mint was uh, telling the truth when they said that this is a shortage of silver planchets. And um, now, have they managed their company in such a way and found enough suppliers to supply their silver planchets? or develop their own smelting operations? No, because they're not run by, um, by forward-thinking people, and they really don't care, okay? They, they really don't care if they, if they meet their mandate. So um, that's why I'm starting to believe the story that it is a silver planchet uh, shortage. Um, I do think that they have a financial interest in keeping the cost of silver down. Um, I do think that there may be ways that uh, they, they don't want to pay more than they need to. Um, but I really, now I'm starting to believe that the primary issue is the planchet issue, uh, which will ultimately resolve um, if uh, the price of silver stays high enough um, to uh, support the manufacturing process. And I can only hope that it will. All right, let's take a break here for a second and come back and talk about the markets. All right, so going back uh, a week, we were right around uh, 2560. A very strange thing happened on the Kitco charts uh, Sunday night. Perhaps you were there for Salivate's um, um, live stream on that. But Kitco opened up not at 2560 or 2550. They opened up a dollar lower, right around 2450, I think it was. And I had said to a friend, uh, everybody was saying, oh, it's a glitch. But, you know, isn't that strange that Kitco opens up with a fictitious number about a dollar lower, and then over the course of the next couple of days, we actually realized that dollar drop. I don't know, conspiracy theory, or maybe somebody pushing the wrong button a day too early. But um, we sure got that drop, as some people were expecting. I think I told you to look out for it. And here we are, right around 2460. Uh, GSR up over 78. But we are through the end of March, and now April is a fresh month. So uh, I am, uh, you know, once again, as always, optimistic about uh, the price moves. GSR nice and high. Uh, gold sitting on pretty good support in the 19 in the low 1900s. Um, the other thing I've noticed recently is that the miners 
uh, seem to be telegraphing the next move in silver and gold. Uh, we had a tremendous spike up a few days ago and then we lost all the gains and reversed in the miners and sure enough silver and gold followed the next day. So uh, if you like following the miners as I do, I'm getting uh, fully invested again in the silver and gold miners. I think it's an ex excellent place to put your money. Uh, not financial advice, just what I'm doing. Um, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good about silver here. I'm feeling pretty good about gold here. As you get into the marketplace, uh, those high premiums are certainly uh, a detractor, so don't pay those high premiums. Look for the sales. Um, we can find uh, silver as we speak uh, over at Apmex at 329 um, over their fictitious uh, spot price. Their spot price is higher, so when they say 329 they probably mean 349 over um, actual spot. And there are some other uh, sales as well if you stay away from uh, the Silver Eagles and even the Maples at this point. I still like generic more than I do sovereign coins in both silver and gold. But um, don't pay too much, okay, and wait for the dips. Uh, there's always a dip when you don't expect it, uh, so try to, uh, try to counter your emotions. I know we all like to buy when silver is going up, but really you want to buy it when you get the smackdown. And we did have a pretty good opportunity last week uh, in, in some of the smackdowns to invest if you can find the right physical product. Okay, uh, that's all I have for this video. I hope you found this interesting. would love to hear your thoughts about uh, the planchet shortage and why don't more companies enter that marketplace. If, uh, you know, the, uh, the Mint needs more suppliers of planchets, uh, they're down to one big one and then a secondary one that can't keep up with growing demand. I mean, what are they going to do when demand for Eagles is uh, 50 million or 60 million or 70 million. Well, they're going to do apparently what they've been doing, and that is put their uh, put their dealers on allocation mode because they are not fulfilling their responsibility by not looking ahead to the future and diversifying their suppliers. Shame on you, U.S. Mint, um, and and. You know, nobody will even tell us that, but that's clearly the case. Um, and I think they need to work on that, and I think they need to uh, eliminate the excuse for the uh, primary wholesalers to raise their prices through the roof. Again, I'm still boycotting Silver Eagles. I have no reason to buy even one. I think there are plenty of reasons to sell your Silver Eagles if you choose to do so, and you can get. Uh, 40, you know, 38 to 40 dollars for a Silver Eagle. I, I strongly would consider selling at this point. That would put the GSR at around 50 to 1 if you look at the retail GSR. But uh, just a thought I've been having recently. Okay, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, hope you have a wonderful weekend. And this is Louie signing out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.